Uh, for Dijkstra's algorithm, the idea is that, you know, here it's just a V loop. It's uh, obviously the, the running time is going to be greater than V, so this is just V. Uh, here we are doing, this is a V loop, but the insert inside of the loop is not necessarily constant time. So it's V times the number of inserts. And this is an extraction, and this each node gets extracted v times. So this is v times the number of extracts. And this is an E loop. So this is within an E loop, even though it's conditional. So because it's conditional, we should say is less than or equal. The number of executions of this is less than or equal E times number of what? Decrease key. Now, for uh, for uh, an unsorted array priority queue, so if the Q is an unsorted array, then T of V and E equals V times the number of inserts. Now, when you are inserting into an unsorted array, that's O of 1, right? So this is going to be O of V. And when you are extracting the minimum from an unsorted array, that's going to be what? You extract the minimum from an unsorted array. So you have to search for the minimum. So this is going to be v, v times V. So this is V squared. And you have these decrease keys, E of the decrease keys. Uh, in an unsorted array, decrease key does not uh, does not cause any operation. So this is going to be constant time. This is a constant time operation. So this is going to be O of E. Now, of course, you know, the V goes away. And we end up with O of V squared and E. But we can get rid of the E because what? V squared is greater. Yeah is greater than or equal to. So E, remember, E for a complete graph, for a complete graph, E equals theta of V squared mm -hmm. for a complete graph. So if it's complete, it's V squared. If it's something else, less than complete, it's less than V squared. So V squared is an upper bound on E. So we just get rid of E. So this is just V squared. Now for a heap, Priority Q, T of V and E equals. Uh, now for the heap, all of these operations are going to be log n. And the n here is the number of vertices, because what we keep in the priority Q is vertices. We keep vertices, not edges. Our priority Q stores vertices, not edges. So everything will get multiplied by log v. So here, basically, we're substituting O of log v for each insert, extract, decrease key. So then we will get O of v log v plus O of v log v plus O of e log v. OK? So this is what we will have. Of course, uh, you know, v log v will only need one of them. But if the graph is connected, or if all vertices are reachable from the source, then our e is going to be at least v minus 1, right? Remember this. In order to connect v vertices, you need at least v minus 1 edges. 
in order to have a, a connected graph for V vertices, this is the minimum number of vertices that edges that you need. So four vertices, three edges. Right. So this is a tree, by the way. So the tree is, you know, gives you the, the cheapest way or the minimum number of edges for connecting a number of graphs in V minus 1. So if every vertex is reachable from the source, E will be equal to omega of V. So the order of E is going to be at least V, at least the same order as V, or greater, because it could be dense. So E is greater than or equal to V if the graph is connected. So now, with this, our T of V and E in this case will be O of E log V. We can get rid of the V, in this case E, will be greater than or equal to V. So we get rid of, these will be lower order terms or of the same order. Okay, so these are the two formulas for an unsorted array and for a P. Now what we are interested in is analyzing the asymptotic complexity with uh, for a dense graph and for a sparse graph. So for a, a dense graph, Now, for a dense graph to, uh, to simplify the analysis, we assume that it's complete. So when we analyze for a dense graph, we take the extreme case, which is complete, because we want to have something that is easy to analyze. So we will assume, assume E equals what? V squared. Theta of V squared, yeah. In this case, uh, T, well, in, in this case, the unsorted array will give us T of V and E equals what? Well, it's not going to change, right? Here, it's, it's, got, it's just going to be O of V squared. And for heap, okay, so uh, yes, this is not, or oh, even this. Okay. Okay, so let me unsorted array. For an unsorted array, I have T of V and E equals O of V squared. For heap, I have T of V and E, T of V and E equals what? E log V, but I'm assuming that E is V squared because <coughs> it's dense. So um, I will get O of V squared log V. Okay, V squared log V. So this is for an unsorted array. So the, uh, sorry, for, unsor for dense, for unsorted array, it's V squared. For heap, it's V squared log V. So which one is better? Unsorted array. Yeah, V squared is better. So what it means is that, you know, if you have an unsorted array, if you have an unsorted array, then it's, uh, uh, in this case, you will be doing, uh, the, the most expensive operation for uh, the most expensive operation for an unsorted array is the extract minimum but the extract minimum will be executed only v times while uh, with an with a dense graph this is v squared so you will have v squared of these decrease key so in this case the unsorted array will beat the heap 
because in the heap for the heap here when you have too many edges you will do e edges times log v for each decrease key so with the with the heap you will go above the v squared so it'll be v squared log v but is this above v squared by a great amount or by a small amount yeah so it's log v remember log v is a small quantity compared to v so log v is tiny so this is slightly greater than v squared so here with the dense uh, the heap is slightly slower than the unsorted array now let's look at uh, a sparse graph for a sparse graph now for a sparse graph when we analyze a sparse graph we assume that e equals theta of v for a sparse graph we assume that e is of the same order as v which means that you know e could be any constant multiple of the number of vertices so if it's 2v or 3v or 5v that's the same order as v and we consider that graph uh, that sparse so for a sparse graph if we substitute in those equations uh, unsorted array for an unsorted array t of v and e equals o of v squared it's not gonna change this is independent of the relation between e and v so for the unsorted array the running time is independent of the relation between e and v so it's it's the same whether the graph is sparse or dense while if we have a heap we'll get t of v and e equals o of v log v. Uh, v log v now which one is better the heap is better now for the sparse now is it substantially better or only a little bit better it's substantially better right so in, uh, in assignment 3 you have seen the difference between n squared and n log n Right, so n squared is insertion sort and n log n is merge sort so the difference between these is just like the difference between insertion sort and the, and merge sort which is which you have seen is huge for a large uh, input so when the graph is sparse the heap outperforms the unsorted array by uh, a substantial amount while if it's uh, while if it's a dense graph then the unsorted array will outperform the heap by a small amount by a log factor okay so now if you don't know the input if you don't know the input uh, the the nature of the input or whether the graphs are going to be dense or sparse then which which one would you choose so heap because if, if you if you choose the heap you know in the worst case if the graph if the input graph happens to be very dense you will only be only paying this logarithmic factor okay all right so this ends our discussion of uh, Dijkstra's algorithm uh, any questions on Dijkstra? Okay. So remember this kind of analysis, you know, when we analyze dense and sparse, for dense we assume that theta is v squared, and for sparse we assume that, yes, sorry, that e is v squared. We assume here that e is theta of v. So if there are no questions, I will give an introduction to the next topic, to the, I will give a, an overview of the next topic, which is uh, minimum spanning trees, and then, uh,